All right, we've got James Mitchell here. Uh, Andy, you want to lead off? Hey, James, can you kind of take us through what the process was for you uh, deciding to come back? Uh, I know you kind of at least checked out the NFL and see what they had to say, but, but how did that whole thing work out? Uh, yeah, so basically, you know, I, just, I submitted my name, obviously, to get feedback from the NFL. And then from there, you know, I just kind of sat down with uh, Coach Fuente a couple times, talked to Coach Sheeps a couple times, um, basically just even talked to Coach Cheerlink a couple times because I know he's got some buddies in the NFL. And then from there, it was just, you know, just talks with my family and felt like what we thought was best and um, uh, kind of like what we thought I needed to do. And, um, you know, through those talks, uh, we just decided that it was best that I come back and get another year and I'll be able to get my degree. So um, everything should be good heading into next year, hopefully. What, what was the NFL's recommendation? Uh, they recommended that I come back and get um, uh, more work, more stuff on film. So that's, I felt like when I came down to it and uh, talking with my family, talking with my coaches, that's what I felt like I needed as well. So. When you talk to Fuente, uh, I, I imagine they say general improvement across the board. But is there anything specifically when they talk to you about that that you go, yeah, I, I really want to improve that part of my game? Uh, yeah, I feel like the biggest thing that I can remember anyway is, you know, just the uh, inline blocking from like the wide position, like against DNs and stuff like that. And then uh, the route tree is definitely something that I need to work on and something uh, was part of some of the feedback that I got as well. Is that a hard decision? I mean, to be that close to being able to go to the next level, I have to imagine you kind of wrestled with that decision quite a bit. I did, but I honestly came to terms with it uh, with a little more ease than I thought I was going to. Um, you know, I actually decided pretty early. I didn't announce till later, but I'd actually decided uh, maybe a couple weeks after the after the Virginia game. So I actually came to terms with the decision and uh, at ease. So that was good for me. Thank you. Mike Nisley. What was, did, um, I was curious what the coaching staff said to you, and you know, if you did come back, were they, um, you know, I, I, I asked Brad Cordelson about getting you the ball, you know, as much as they could, you know, some of the other tight ends in the league were averaging more touches. Was that a discussion at all? I mean, obviously they want to give me some touches, but I mean, I feel like the main thing was, you know, what can I do to help the team no matter what it is. Um, obviously not just getting the ball was part of uh, my feedback. So I know there's a lot more that I need to do than just, uh, you know, go come back and get more touches. Like that's not the reason why I came back. But um, of, we had talks about it, but like they know that I came back and I'm going to still do whatever it takes to help this team win. When you look back at the, at the season, you know, Coach Fuente said uh, in December you guys just weren't consistent enough throughout the year. Do you, did you get a feel when you look back why the offense couldn't get to that level where you week in and week out you were more consistent? I just feel like, you know, I heard Brock mention about the whole playing as a team. I feel like that played a big part in it and uh, kind of why Fuente's been preaching it because, you know, when we did all play together, um, you know, we we put points on the board, and you know, we we beat some we beat some good teams and played with some good teams, and then, you know, in that stretch, I feel like we kind of lost sight of that, lost focus of that, and that's why we weren't we struggled on offense down the stretch, weren't able to move the ball or get points, and I feel like that that kind of had a big um, a big deal in it. You mentioned him preaching, uh, Justin talking about being a team. Is he what's his other message been this off season? Has anything been different? Um, you know, what has he kind of uh, tried to do here the last couple of weeks as you guys have, have regrouped and kind of get ready for, for spring? Honestly, I think like the whole team thing has been the biggest thing. You know, we've had uh, our Wisdom Wednesday meetings, um, and um, we our one last week was about being a good teammate. And um, I feel like the whole this whole off season is being. Uh, based around you know playing as a team, uh, coming together as a team, and just you know the power of what it can be, uh, the power of be being a good team, being a good teammate, and uh, you know just assembling together as one instead of individuals. And those are new, the Wisdom Wednesdays. Uh, we did them, I think, in the summer, a couple summers ago or last summer, but we've done them before. But um, so we started them back up this uh, this off season. Thanks, Norm. 
Hey, James, with, with Christian leaving, Quincy, Hendon, Khalil, guys like that, did any of sort of what was what you were going to be surrounded by or what you had coming back to work with around you um, factor into your decision as, as far as whether to come back or not? Uh, not too much, honestly. I knew, you know, whether those guys stayed or left. Obviously, they were big pieces in this offense, um, but I knew we still had a lot of guys coming back uh, with a lot of experience, a lot of guys that are good players. And a lot of guys I enjoyed playing with, quite honestly. So um, it didn't really affect my decision too much. It wasn't really the main thing that I thought about. Yeah, with, with all that coming and going, and things like that going on around you, um, as you guys get ready for, for spring here, I know you've got some time clearly to, to, to form an identity. Um, a lot of practices to, to, to work towards that. But as just preliminarily, do you get a sense based on what you have coming back and, and what you offer, what what your offensive identity is? I still think, uh, you know, we want to be that uh, balanced offense. Um, obviously, we had a great running back in Khalil last year, but we still got guys like Raheem, uh, Keyshawn King, Jalen Holston. So I, think, I feel like we're still good in the backfield. And uh, we got uh, me, Trey, Tay, Gallo, uh, Shango. We got a lot of uh, weapons on the outside as well that can make plays in the passing game. So I still feel like we want to be kind of that balanced offense to be able to do both and you know keep people on their toes. Yeah, thanks, Ben. David Teal. James, what did you do to get away from football, if anything, after the UVA game? Uh, really, it was just a lot of family time, which usually with my dad, it's it's a lot of talk about football. But I feel like, you know, just being at home and just being around my family, spending Christmas with them, uh, spending New Year's with them. Um, you know, I feel like that that was good for me. It was one of the longest breaks we've had um, since I've been in college. So I feel like just being around my family and getting to spend time with them uh, was just, you know, the biggest thing for me and was the best way to get a, kind of get away. And then when when you talk to or get an evaluation from NFL people, when you think about it, Virginia Tech has used you in a variety of roles. Where do you envision yourself or how do you envision yourself fitting into an NFL team? Um, kind of the same way that I've been used here. Um, I feel like that's going to get me the best shot to get on the field at the next level is just being able to do a lot of different things. and. Um, that's why when they ask me to do different things here, I've tried to pride myself and uh, you know accept the challenge. Everything they've asked me to do, I've tried to do it to the best of my ability because I feel like that's what's going to help me and um, help me get to the next level. Tight end has become such a glamour position at, at the next level. In the Super Bowl at Gronk and Kelsey, are there are there guys that you try to model your game after, or guys you just really like to watch and admire? Uh, I definitely like watching Kelsey, and I like watching Kittle too. Uh, Kelsey Kittle and uh, Zach Ertz are probably the, my three favorites to watch. And um, you know, Kittle Kittle brings the best of both worlds. He's great in the uh, run game and the passing game. And then Ertz and Kelsey, you know, they're obviously they're nightmares in the passing game. So it's fun to kind of watch them and watch how they run their routes and do different things. Thank you, Andrew. Hey James, how you doing today? So I guess just the first question I've got for you is you talked about your education. How important was it to come back and get that degree for you? Um, I mean, it, it was important for sure. Uh, I knew coming back that obviously I'd have the opportunity to get that. And, um, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to do. You know, I, uh, when I first got to college, you know, I had planned on getting my degree before thinking about leaving, obviously. You know, things changed a little bit. I obviously thought about leaving, but um, definitely the decision to come back and being able to get my degree is exciting, and uh, I'm excited to, you know, kind of finish up uh, my academic career. Uh, next question for you. High school football starting up on Monday in Southwest Virginia. What do you tell the kids that are just on the, like, fence right now? Like, can we even make it through a season? You made it through an entire season. I know you at least we didn't see you at all on the COVID list at all this year. So, I mean, how hard is it to make it through the season and what can be done? I mean, it definitely is difficult, but I mean, you just gotta, you know, follow all the protocols that they're telling you, 
you know, you can't, you got to sacrifice some things like uh, going out, like, and if you are going out, you got to make sure you're following all the safety protocols and just being, uh, being absolutely 100% safe with it. But um, it definitely can be done if you do the right things. And um, I'm excited to watch my guys down at Union. I know they're going to have a good season, so uh, I'm definitely excited for them. Mike Nislick, did you have a follow-up? Yeah, I was just curious with uh, Braxton kind of coming in now and being kind of penciled the top of the depth chart. Um, has he been any different? Um, you know, what's his been kind of his focus here with you guys and, and the receivers and kind of I don't know the last couple of weeks. Has his, his voice been any different kind of in the locker room? Uh, yeah, I think he's definitely growing as a leader, uh, especially. You know, after coming in against Clemson and then obviously starting against UVA and playing well, offense play well, I think he's uh, growing and developing as a leader. Uh, you know, we've got guys out there throwing uh, four times a week, three or four times a week, and, um, you know, that's been him getting those guys together. So I think he's definitely excited, and I think he's ready to, you know, uh, become a full-time starter. And I know I, I don't know if you guys are still doing anything, everything in small groups, but um, – Justin said that the team right now is kind of as big as it's ever been in spring. Uh, you got all these early enrollees, you got returners, you know, six super seniors. Do you get a sense that the team is larger? Is it, is it feel any different that you guys got a bigger locker room or have you got that sense yet? Cause things are, are done in small groups. Oh, uh, I haven't completely got the whole sense yet. Cause we haven't done like team conditioning or anything yet. It's still like uh, three separate groups right now, but, um, we start the team stuff here soon, so you know I'm actually excited to you know get everybody together and uh, start competing as a team. Thanks, Norm. Did you have something else? Yeah, just uh, did, didn't your mom play basketball at Brown? Yes, sir. Look, your your football recruitment took you a totally different direction, obviously, from the Ivy League. But as a kid growing up. Did you ever think about, or did you ever have a goal of, of, of maybe going to the Ivy League at all? Nah, not really. I always dreamed of playing at a Power Five. I knew the Ivy League just probably wasn't for me. But uh, you know, I think her playing uh, did kind of inspire and push me. Then um, I wanted to be be a Division One athlete, and um, you know, my dad obviously helped as well. He pushed me, pushed me hard, and. Um, but definitely her just being a D1 athlete definitely, you know, inspired me and wanted and I wanted to be a D1 athlete, but not not in the Ivy League necessarily. Did your mom ever try to steer you that direction when you were a little kid? Or no, not or really. Plant honestly, that, plant that seed in your head at least. Not really. She doesn't really like to talk about her uh, basketball days. She's very humble. She's quiet about it. You know, probably if I didn't mention it, not a lot of people would know. So. Yeah. Well, man, thank you. All right. Thanks, James. We'll get you to your workout, all right? Appreciate it.